Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Money Talk Tuesday with my financial CFO, Megan Dolly. Hello, Megan. Good morning. I, I don't know if I'm going to like this topic, but it's an important <laughs> one. So let's go for it. How to use your yep. balance sheet part one. So talk to us about balance sheets, the things that we like to never look at ever and try to say, well, I have an accountant and a bookkeeper. So why do I have to know anything about that? So I'm going to start with two things. One is perspective and the other is you're paying for it. So you might as well use it. So perspective, right? So we hire coaches and we hire outside sources to be voices to support the, to point out the things that we can't see right? We all have the same capabilities, but sometimes we just need somebody else to show us what our options are and where we're at in reality, objectively, and not the subjective lens that we put on everything, right? And so the balance sheet is objective. That's that's part one of why we're going to use a balance sheet. And then the second thing I said is that you're paying for it anyway. Whether you are organizing your financials, doing it yourself, you're paying for it with your time, or if you're paying somebody else to do it, you're literally paying somebody else to have this financial information. You have it somewhere, whether mm -hmm. it's causing you emotional damage by not doing it, you're paying for it. So you might as well have the information and it's good information. So I'm going to go super basic on today is just like, what's on a balance sheet? What's on there? Because I was talking about let me just repeat what I heard. It's the numbers and it takes all the emotion out of your business head, right? So I'm not making enough money. I don't know if I'm making enough money. Am I this? Am I that? Your balance sheet doesn't lie. So that's where you just go look at the numbers and that gives you the facts. Yeah. And once you get comfortable with it, you can start asking really good questions about your business, whether you're asking yourself or just asking your staff or asking outside help. That's when the good questions come and you can start getting really great insights and ideas on what to do next because you're asking good questions. Oh, you get so fun. excited about this I stuff. Do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm love, I do. I'm glad you do. <laughs> I love getting curious, right? I love digging in and finding finding the little gold nuggets and finding the little worms eating away at all my cabbage. I mean, all the worms eating away at your profit. <laughs> at your sure. profit. Okay, so tell yeah. us what yeah. you find on the balance sheet. Okay, so like just yesterday, I was talking to a client and um, she's like, how did you see that? Well, I was like, well, there's not a spot on your balance sheet for it. It's there's there should be a spot for this thing that we're discussing on your balance sheet and so we had to dig in and and, and find some things and we found some things I'm like oh well it looks like you overpaid on your taxes because you never counted this expense do, 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 do. so there are things that you can find right there okay. once you understand the structure and what ought to be there and if it's not there you know how to fix things or if there are things there that you know how to read like oh look at all of these extra assets i have or oh look at this equity that i have you can start answering questions easier of like can i really pay myself more can i give myself a raise well maybe you can you know okay, okay. all right so i'm going to show you a picture of a balance sheet you ready for this okay. i am i'm hoping we can oh you're showing it that way you're not sharing your screen okay uh -uh. Uh-uh, you see this? Here, let me, let me, this. I can make myself, wait, I want to make you bigger and me smaller. Okay. This Assets, is a balance sheet. Liabilities and equity. Okay. That's all it is. That's all it is. You don't need numbers to see your balance sheet. This is a balance sheet. You see how these lines, like the asset lines, is equal to the liabilities and the equity? That's why it's called a balance sheet, because it all equals the same thing all together. Oh, okay. All right. So okay. your assets, and then yes. give me, okay, I, I know the definition, but give the definition of assets, liabilities, and okay. bring it closer again. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, okay. okay, liabilities and equity. My Our names are in the way. I might have to take away the Do stuff. I need to scroll? On, See, I'm the scrolling. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let me take away. Okay, now go up. Eh? Up, right there. Stay there. Assets, liabilities, equity. Okay. Definition of assets, liabilities, and equity. Okay. Assets are the things of value that you have. It's, and it starts with how liquid is it? 
right? Like liquid being how immediately can it be turned into cash? So it starts with cash because cash is already cash, right? So at the top of every balance sheet is going to be your bank balances, whether it's your savings account or your checking account, money market accounts. However difficult it is to turn something into cash, that's how close to the top of the asset section it's going to be. Okay. Okay. And so if you have outstanding accounts receivable, like somebody owes you money, that's going to come next because that's pretty easy to make that phone call and say, hey, dude, I see that you're 30 days past due. I need my money. Right. You can turn that into cash. Okay. Oh, that's why you got to make those collection calls sometimes. People are like, I don't have any cash. I need to make more sales. Well, did you know that you have $60,000 sitting in your accounts receivable? You have cash on your balance sheet. You just got to make the phone call and get it. You're not my clients. They never have gotten it before they did the work, but okay. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And then the more, the things that are harder to turn into cash, like maybe your computer or a car where you buy it for $1,200, but you're going to have a really hard time selling it for $1,200 because it's used. It depreciates quickly. So the harder it is to turn into cash, the lower on that asset section is going to be. Okay. But it's stuff that you have that has value. Your assets. Okay. Okay. Your inventory could be that. Whatever. Next comes your liabilities. Like, what do I owe people? What doesn't really belong to me? Um, and it's the sooner that you owe it, the higher up it's going to be in the liability section. Like your credit cards are due every month. So that's probably going to be on top along with your accounts payable, like your, your vendors, your suppliers, your people who are doing your delivery and installation. Mm -hmm. And that's due in the next 30 days. That'll be up there in accounts payable as well. But you'll also find some long-term liabilities. And um, if you've received part of the idle loan or if your PPP wasn't fully forgiven, um, but it's a longer stretch of time that you have to pay it back, that will appear lower on the liabilities section because it's, a long, it's considered a long-term liability if it takes more than a year to pay it back. Okay. okay. So we're getting into a little bit of the terminology with long-term and short-term liabilities. But there's another part right here that trips people up. If you have been paid for services that you have, can't, you're not able for some reason to give those services to the client or they prepaid for something like, hey, I'm just going to give you this six months from now, we're going to do this project, but can you just hold on to this? This is my deposit to reserve your time or whatever. Mm -hmm. you haven't earned that money yet correct it shouldn't be on your income statement it should be a liability so the cash is sitting up there you have the cash sitting in that asset section mm -hmm. right and the mm -hmm. other side of that entry is a liability it's not revenue it's you still owe somebody for that money that's sitting in that account So that gets tricky because it's called unearned revenue. And we're like, well, unearned revenue. Revenue just sits on the income statement. Revenue goes straight to the income statement. It doesn't. It, it's a reminder. If you do this right, it's sitting in your liabilities section as a reminder of, oh, yeah, I still need to do something because it's not really my money yet. So as an, for interior designers, they sometimes call this a retainer, Right. Or in the case of where I teach my clients to charge first and then do the services, you're saying technically that money is not theirs until they perform the duties related to it. Yeah. No, not to confuse the issue, but there's a little bit of wiggle room there in mm -hmm. that if it's you're going to perform it in the next 30 days, there's no reason to go through the exercise of putting it in unearned revenue and then shoving it over to revenue on the income statement. And that gets complicated. If it's a longer term project, you want eyeballs on it. You want true eyeballs. You want to stick it in liabilities. And QuickBooks will do that for you if you have it set up right. If it's okay. super long term. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where we don't want to get into the weeds with that, but there's a way of processing your transactions that puts it in the right spot on your balance sheet. Right, right. And, and that's where I'm... As it's earned, then it goes to the asset side. Yeah, yeah. 
or at actually the income statement side, but that's where it sits. That's where I see a lot of the, li I find stuff. That's where I find a lot of stuff is in that liability section. Um, like uh, for instance, um, sales tax. Like if you have a negative number on your liabilities, like negative $17,000 in your sales tax, that means that you have an asset in sales tax, meaning the state owes you $17,000. Something is very, very wrong there. <laughs> we need to figure out what went wrong where because we can probably find some either cash that you've overpaid or things are getting done improperly, whatever it may be. The liabilities section is ripe, ripe for, for improvements. You're giving me a great idea that I'll talk to you about after this live, but okay. okay. <laughs> so if you have a bookkeeper and or an accountant, that is not an excuse never to look at your balance sheet because they may not understand your business as well as they need to as also. And when you're looking at these lines, you may say something doesn't make sense if you know what you're looking at, which is why we're doing this, right? So you can start to look at your balance sheet and know what you're looking at. So I know we still have to go to equity, but I almost want to tell everyone, if you're following Money Talk Tuesday as a series, next Tuesday, before you come and listen, print your balance sheet. Mm -hmm. Print your balance sheet from your QuickBooks. Go back to this recording and look at your balance sheet as Megan's talking and as I'm speaking to see whether you're following along. So that's going to help the terminology sink in and start to give you the right vocabulary to ask your accountant or yourself or your bookkeeper the right questions. Okay. Yes. So we did assets. We did liabilities. Did we finish liabilities? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about equity. So equity, you'll see, is the difference between assets and liabilities. Because it's a balance sheet, it has to balance. Two lines have to equal one line, okay? Mm -hmm. So the equity is what's left. It's like the snapshot of the value of your business. I have assets that are worth $100,000. I have liabilities of 60. So if I took everything, liquidated it, turned it into cash, and I paid off all of my liabilities with it, what would I have left over? In that scenario, you'd have $40,000 left over. And so like a fire sale of your business where all of the other factors are taken out. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. What's your business worth? Fire sale liquidate the assets, pay off the liabilities and take everything that's left over and put it in my pocket, technically or theoretically, that's what your business is worth. That's the equity. That's what it all equals in the end. So um, equity is a great place to keep track of the value that you have created over the lifetime of your business. So down at the bottom, there are going to be certain sections like um, the equity will be like what you initially invested in your company, what you've taken out of your company uh, that wasn't on your payroll. That's a whole nother issue. The lifetime income of your company plus this year's income of your company together. So profit, right? What you've invested, what all of the past years have made in profit in what this year's profit has been altogether. Those, that's what makes up the equity section. Um, and it'll tell you like, how much have you taken out? How much have you put in? How much value have you created over the entire lifetime of your business? Um, yes, it's really informative. It's really informative. And that's the beauty of accounting. That's why I like it. It tells a story is that it all balances out. When you put something over here, there has to be another side of it. It's a yin and yang. I'm so glad you like it so much. <laughs> but no, it's true. You know what? The biggest issue people have when it comes, well, there's many of them, right? Their money story. But part of it is that there's so much emotion tied to it, where if you're looking at it just from a number standpoint, your balance sheet and your income statement, it tells a story of your business without any emotion and no emotion involved. It just tells the story. And that from there, Without emotion involved, you can say, how do I rewrite this story? Or how does the story continue in a way that's going to 
make that equity line um, better, right? What do I have to do to make that better? And it goes down to just then, okay, I need it to be this number. How do I get there? Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? And, and, then all the, and then all the emotion comes back. But <laughs> but okay. it's a starting point to really understand the story of your business. Yeah. If you're looking at that retained earnings line and saying, really, I've worked my ass off that hard and that's all I've created for myself in the lifetime of this business. Maybe it's time to get some outside perspective and some outside help to say, I'm working far too hard to have that be my retained earnings number what's going on but let's fix it let's find out okay all right so this was money talk tuesday how to use your balance sheet part one so what's part two going to be <laughs> part two we're going to add some details in there i think we're going to um start looking like at at the assets and like what questions comes out of the asset section what questions specifically can come out of the liabilities perspective <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a reminder, if you're just coming on now or you're watching on replay, get your balance sheet printed, get it handy, and follow this couple of part series on understanding your balance sheet and learn from this. This is why we do this, so you guys can learn the terminology and understand your business better from an accounting and a numbers perspective, right? Money Talk Tuesday. So thank you, Megan. You're welcome. Thanks for letting me have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everyone how to, everyone knows how to find me, right? Business coach, Nancy, Nancy .com. How do they find you? Megandolly.com. Easy guys. We made it easy for you. So um, we will see all of you next Tuesday for money talk Tuesday and how to use your balance sheet part two. So print your balance sheets and have some fun with us. I'm going to go print. I'm going to go print mine. <laughs> Good, good, good. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Have a great week. Take care.